Okay, uh, thank you very much. My name is Tom Mueller. I am the GIS professor at California University of Pennsylvania, and I have two of my, uh, two of my former and best students, Lacey and Andy, here to give a presentation that we hope interests you to show the connection between academia and the private world. So I always start off with this quote, especially in a first presentation that I give. This is what I live by. Um, my advisor was Jay Morgan at Towson University, and this is what he said when I told him I wanted to be a college professor. He says, you know, college is a great place where all this knowledge is done, but if it doesn't trickle down to the community, it doesn't mean, well, I won't use his language, but it doesn't mean a hill of beans. So what he was trying to say was go out and get some service learning projects done because the diploma is not the ticket to your job. I mean, if that was the case, it wasn't during my time, but it definitely isn't now. Students want real world projects. They really want to say, hey, what's going to happen in the real world? Am I going to have this perfect data set that, Owen, that always works and I get 100% geocodes? No. They want to have to deal with misspellings. They want to have those issues. And you guys, as private industry, want them to have those experiences because those experiences will make them better employees. Now, I always have looked for a quote to try and figure out how I would say this. But I think my hero said it best. Students need to adapt and improvise. They need to go out, get the data, figure out what's wrong with it, fix the data, get the data uh, mapped, and provide the information. And that's really what we try and do at Cal U. We've done it through crime mapping projects. We do local crime mapping projects for uh, police departments. We've gone and worked with parks and recreation departments. One of the things that I really wanted to work with was the Marcellus Shale. Now, I don't have to sell the group. We all know that GIS is Arthur Fonzarelli cool. OK, that's why we're here, right? But with Marcellus Shale, that brought a whole new avenue to everything. And it also brought a whole new set of questions. And those were the questions I was trying to get at. So I really talked with Range, and I talked with EQT, and I talked with Console, and I talked with Seneca. And I sat down with a lot of companies, and I was like, look, I want to be able to give my students the spatial questions you're asking so that they can figure out how to answer them. I don't expect the data. I understand private industry, companies, blah, blah, blah. There are issues with that. So I understand that. And basically what I do in my intro to GIS class is it's about learning what the difference between raster and vector is, what's good and bad about it, and being able to talk intelligently about that. Oh, and then understanding the software. Okay, because back in my day, you'd had the theory course in the fall, and you had the applications course in the spring. And in one, you never touched the computer, and the other one, you always touched the computer. So finally, uh, after talking around and trying to figure out how to really came, I came to Range Resources, and we talked about a particular project um, in which our students would get those types of questions and those types of answers. I'll turn it over to Lacey. Um, yeah, as he said, he came to us wanting to find what applications he could integrate into his classes that we use in the oil and gas industry. So just to name a few, um, land is a big one, and geology, we work very closely with them. Engineering, um, environmental health and safety, planning, sales, and of course doing presentations such as this one. Um, so Andy and I kind of sat down and we decided to give kind of a roundabout start to finish of the process of finding a well pad, developing it, and getting it off to sales. So we did an outline, um, geology being first and foremost, as Bill gave our keynote today, uh, very important, that's where it all starts, so we work very closely with them. The coal industry is a big one as well, we um, look at the active mine permits, the um, future mine permits, anything that's already been mined out, we take that into consideration. Uh, surface land, we look at the topographic maps, find a flat spot, hopefully not heavily forested. The aerial imagery, making sure there's no structures in that flat spot. Uh, then of course we move to mineral land. We map all the leases for the land department uh, using the tax parcels. They're all assigned the lease IDs, they have a lot of attribute information to them so we can help the land department out greatly. Uh, also taking the streams, wetlands, floodplain setbacks, uh, certain areas, we have to stay certain distances apart. Uh, the existing wells, old shallow wells, there's also certain permits we have to get for that, so we take those into close consideration. Uh, the pad and lateral layout, once we finally find a spot, once the field guys come back, 
They say, we're good, yes, go for it. So we start to get back with the, the geology department, lay out the laterals, and move from there. Now once it's all developed, then we need pipeline and infrastructure. So Andy is the pipeline guy here. So, um, And then after that, he also does the 911 address mapping, which is important in two ways. First and foremost, safety. If there's ever an incident at the site, the site has a physical address that the fire department has so they can get directly there as if they were going to the house. And um, secondly, just easier for employees to get to the pad sites. So with all of that information given to Dr. Miller, we also provided an AOI. We gave him a sample package of data of these shape files, and then his students were then able to kind of visually see where to start, and then they could build on that from there. So we gave him a uh, clip of Northern Beaver County, um, the townships, the tax parcels. We also gave him hydrological data, the streams and the floodplains, so that they could utilize the setback requirements. Uh, we created a sample lease layer. We made up fake uh, lease IDs, fake lessers, and also we did that for a competitor lease layer. And we also provided them with a couple pad and wellbore layouts so they could see how they look. So with that, I'll turn it over to Andy. And a few examples of what Lacey was talking about here with the AOI we developed in Northern Beaver County. You can see it highlighted in red on the upper right-hand corner. Zooming in on that, we have the um, streams, floodplains, wetlands, river. We pulled the tax data. We pulled the um, parcels, the townships, and the county data and packaged up all that background data. Once we had that packaged up, we were able to fabricate a lease position map. Um, we showed Cali Oil and Gas Company leases in yellow and developed competitor college lease positions in the various other colors. Um, with this, it kind of emphasizes the point that the land departments are always working not only with the landowners, but they also have to work with competing competitor companies to exchange lease positions so that we can produce our undeveloped reserves. <coughs> um, with that lease position map as a starting point, we laid out a uh, well planning map where we decided on a few locations that met the criteria that we would use for a well pad, laid out tentative well bores, and then we pulled in permitting data from the state to show what other companies are doing in that AOI and some of the um, past production in the vertical wells that we might run into in the future that would hinder our production of the play. Um, we then got all this data together, we got it to Dr. Mueller, we sat down and had a discussion about what it is, how we use it, and how it's integrated throughout our company. And then he challenged the students to actually break them up by a township groups for the whole class and have them select certain areas that would be good for a well pad placement. Some of the guidelines that we set forth for the project were that the students would have to have any well pad 300 feet from springs, streams, or wetlands greater than one acre. With the well bore layout, we wanted them to have a 1,000 foot spacing between well bores, 500 feet from an existing building for the well pad placement, and then Dr. Mueller added the um, task that he wanted any unacceptable areas removed from the township so that the map would only show acceptable areas to drill and the highlighted areas that would be best to pursue. With that, Dr. Mueller is going to share an example from the class that one of the students groups put together. Okay, again, I will say, remember, this is all sample data. It's not true. Don't start going to Brighton, Pennsylvania and uh, laying stuff down, okay? Here's the situation as far as this is concerned. I had my students and I said, okay, this is what Range Resources does. We're going to create this map. And you guys probably know the tools better. You know, dissolve, we did buffers, we did dissolves, we did unions, we did all these things. Okay, now you have a base map. And here are all the parcels that were at least within that parcel, within those requirements, except for the building footprints. And what I said then is, okay, now you have these parcels. Come up with a hypothesis. Come up with anything you want. Figure out how you want to analyze this data. Now you have something, go for it. And this particular group said, we'd like to know where the best parcels are to put a drill pad. And we're going to come up with our own sort of matrix, per se. And so they said, we want to know what the top 10 parcels are. 
And they basically sat down and they looked at not only the size, they overlaid road access, they brought in, at the time, the Bing maps, but obviously now under uh, the new licensing rule we have something else, but taking a look with those, where uh, those residential or where those buildings were and decided to just create, okay, this is where we're going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And they went through each of these parcels, rating each of them. And when they did, they said, okay, these at least meet the top ten. So these are the ones we're going to pull out. This is where we think a drill pad will work for all of these particular reasons. Then they said, let's go even further. Let's, now that we have these ten, how good are these ten? What are the, where are the best places? And they started to look at some of the lease data they gave them and, and competition maybe, or maybe, hey, you know what, we're close to this particular parcel. This one may be the next one where we want to have a drill pad to set up. And they came up with their own scores. And basically, this, is, this wasn't, and I'm going to tell you right now, they didn't use map algebra or anything. They just did this straight and built it the way they thought they wanted to do it. And one of the reasons I'm showing this is because this is one of the presentations that Mark really said, you know what, we sort of do something like that. And for the students to think of that without me telling them, I think is the most important lesson from this presentation. Okay? The students had the data and I said, go for it, do whatever you want. I, we had students who looked at wildlife habitat or looked at new road access. Uh, one of the groups actually looked at major highways and where there would need to be now exits and on-ramps and all the other kind of great stuff. So they each had their own little take on it, but they all brought what they had to the table on this. So again, just quick results, you can read them, but look what the students did. This is your future employees doing this, okay? This isn't about me. This isn't about what I teach them and things like that. This is about them saying, you know what? This is pretty cool. This is in my backyard. I'm, I'm, what is all about this? And students get excited about this. I can come up with town A and town B and come up with data and go, go. It doesn't mean anything. But attaching real world relevancy to things, students get excited. They are interested and they give their best. There's nothing wrong or right about that. It's just the way it is. Because they feel like they are making some sort of contribution. It may not be that Range is now going to cut them a check for $100,000 for all the work they've done, but they know that now they can go to an interview and say, this is what I've done. And that's really what the importance of this about is. They even then overlaid it on some aerial photography. You could have zoomed in, taken a look. Actually, in the ArcGIS, you would have clicked on it, and it would have ranked and showed the rankings of each for each of the matrix. So I've given you some Fonzie. I've given you some Clint Eastwood. Let's end with John Lennon. Give students a chance. They're that damn good. Okay? Give them the opportunity to show you what they can do. Because when they're excited about something, when something is real, then they are at their best. And I will tell you right now, obviously I'm going to talk about Cal U students, but I can tell you IUP students are the same way, Penn State students, Pitt, W and J, it doesn't matter. We have some tremendous future employees coming up, and they are ready to show you how great they are. Okay, and that's what really I want this presentation to be about. I want, hopefully you'll come out of this presentation believing what I believe in. Thank you very much.